Welcome to Understanding and Receiving Energetic Healing with Henry Zerang. In this series of shows, we're going to, uh, Henry's going to share his, his experiences and his understanding of energetic healing, not by uh, just how he receives it, but also how he has a relationship with it as a healer. And uh, in this series, we're going to answer a lot of questions like, what is energy? How do I establish a relationship with energy? What is the importance of thought management? How do I receive treatments and how do I hold on and nurture a treatment afterwards? All of these and more are going to be discussed in this series of shows. Uh, today's show, we're going to learn about Henry. He's had a lot of experience and gained a lot of understanding through his own receiving and his training as a healer. And he's got some pretty good stories. And uh, Henry, let's, uh, let's kind of start from the beginning. You know, how, how did you learn about energy in the beginning? That's a really good question, Sheila, and thank you. Uh, well, I would have to start in the early 90s, uh, and I would have to start in Hawaii. Uh, I moved to Hawaii with Helena and Cody for, and lived uh, in Kauai on a beach after Hurricane Niki for about six months. And at that time, not finding any work there or work back in the States or work in general, um, I, I started becoming interested in body work because Helena was a body worker and worked at spas. And um, so as, as I began experimenting with body work, it became obvious that I was pretty good at it. Um, so when I came back to the States, I took a two week class, which qualified me for a license. And I was hired by a chiropractic office in the town I lived in, which qualified that license to be activated. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and at that point, I was able to get a job in, um, in a spa. There were numerous spas in the town I lived in because of the natural hot water. So... I started doing the body work, and then I started receiving body work also at the same time. I started to receive these rolfing sessions. They're, uh, they're 10 session series that structurally realign the body. Uh, in many cases, it's deep myofascial work. And um, a lot of emotions, traumas, uh, stored things in the body were released. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that was uh, very instrumental with the initial waffling sessions was that I had previously had a, um, a total dislocation of the knee in a motorcycle accident and surgically when all those ligaments were reattached and the leg was reattached, um, it kind of looked like I had two right legs. And even though I was able to walk, it, it, it still kind of 
tweaked my body somewhat. And I remember the day that I got up on the table after a Rolfing session and put my feet on the ground. And I knew as soon as I put my feet on the ground that my leg had shifted. And when I looked at it, it had. Wow. It, it looked like a left leg instead of two right legs. Hmm. Well, that was extremely impressive to me that that, that could be done through manipulation of uh, tissues. At that point, I was excited thinking I wanted to become a waffle until I looked at the logistics and where I lived and where the waffle training was. I, and the time of the training, I would have to go to Colorado for two week periods, I mean, excuse me, two months periods and still keep my job. That wasn't going to work. But there was this uh, cranial osteopathic program being offered near where I, I lived and where I was working in Southern California. So uh, I eventually took that training. It was a three-year osteopathic program, and it, it, meant, it meant five times a year uh, for two and a half, three years. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of time in between the sessions to integrate what you had learned, mm -hmm. uh, to practice. And it, it was pretty integral training. It, it covered everything possible. Um, it was extremely subtle. The work um, required that I perceive the whole world through tissue and fluid from my fingertips. So it took a while to develop sensitivity to distinguish what I was feeling, mm -hmm. you know, density of tissues, mm -hmm. um, fluid layers, um, holding patterns, trauma patterns, mm -hmm. uh, release patterns, all of these things one had to determined from the fingertips. And it was, uh, <clears throat> it was definitely a work in progress, this training. I worked in these spas. Um, the cranial work was not really spa work because it, for the most part, people just laid there and they were very confused because they thought they were paying you to do nothing. They didn't feel anything. And that, uh, that really showed me a big piece. Most people don't feel anything, except their own pain and their own trauma and its release that they anticipate. Uh, and what I mean by that is, um, beginning to understand how to bring a person into relationship with energetic work started <laughs> with my years at the spa. Spas, because I worked at several spas. For a 10-year period, I probably worked on close to 4,000 people. So I had a lot of experience. I, I got to learn what was generic to the human body and what was specific to the individual. Because both of those things are going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. You have things that are generic to the human body that you can work on, but the way people hold things, their body chemistry, their, their personal 
traumatic experiences, if any, um, are just that. They're very personal. And that relationship with their body is also personal. And you learn a lot to, to begin to, you know, undo and, and just try to distinguish what is really going on in these, these personal things. Because uh, sometimes these traumas and these emotions that are stored in the body affect different things so that what the effect is is different than the cause of it. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in medicine in general and in healing, most people's minds are of the understanding to treat the effect. Mm -hmm. We're just beginning to learn that it may be beneficial to treat the cause. Yes, it may be more tedious to treat the cause than the effect because the effect, all people have to do is pop a few pills and then they feel, oh, great. But you can't pop a few pills for the cause. You know, the, 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 the cause has to do with, with how you interact your inside life with the outside world. And to be able to integrate that into a balanced, neutral position that works for you and everything around you, well, that, that takes time. And, and, you know, some people have it easier than other people. That is also a fact. But getting back to the the experiences um, to do this body work, it was the most intense work that I had ever done. Most of my work was physical. Uh, I had been an artist. I got trained as an artist. I worked in all materials. I grew up in a welding machine shop. I worked in ceramics factories, um, and I helped remodel and build homes. So, and all of the materials I worked with were inanimate objects. They didn't respond like human tissue. <clears throat> you can work on something like a piece of wood or some clay and you know, the worst thing, if you walked away from it, it would get some dust. You know, you'd come back to it, it would be exactly like you left it. But the human body is very different. The human body has this dynamic that is constantly expressing different things at different times. Um, and, and that's a very interesting dynamic. Plus, I didn't realize it at the time, the exhausting part was the energetic of body work. Not that it's extremely physical or requires you to be extremely strong or anything, but just the concentration and the hands-on mm -hmm. on a person's energy system their body, it's completely exhausting. And it's exhausting in the way that at the end of the day, your adrenals were shot. Completely, you, you, you couldn't even talk to people. You had to go and hibernate for a few hours just to get to kind of normal. Mm -hmm. And so I, I did that for a number of years. Um, had to come to a greater understanding to really learn when I needed to stop, when I needed to take a break, when I was getting burnt out. One of the things that I did to maintain my energetic level was to receive Rolfing sessions. 
I received Walton sessions for 10 years, every two weeks. I spent a lot of money on Walton sessions, but it allowed me to do the work that I was doing. And it, uh, it also showed me a lot of maneuvers with the human body that massage therapists were not using that were extremely effective. So I began to incorporate this into my work because it was familiar with me. Having received this over a long period of time, mm -hmm. I became extremely familiar with the work. Mm -hmm. I didn't call myself a Walter, just a body worker, but I became known for being extremely effective, especially for many things in the body. And what really qualifies um, where I'm at now and what qualifies as energy work started a few years ago. I had uh, come into this information and had watched a friend of mine grow a new liver energetically with some exercises that he was doing and, and different focuses. Well, I became extremely interested in this. So I began to practice some of the exercises he was doing. And all the while I'm practicing them, I'm being told like a sense in, in my mind that these exercises are not for me, that they were specifically for another person and, and their particular needs. And I would be given my own specific exercises when I was ready for them. And when I received these specific exercises, there were actually protocols, which <clears throat> initially started when I was asked to work on this person. And I had to work on this person over the phone 3,000 miles away. And I'm thinking, how am I going to do that? And when I started to have that thought, that is when all of the protocols that I received concerning the work that I was doing came in. So I was able to palpate cranial rhythms over the phone. Cranial rhythms are from the primary respiration of the, the um, cerebral spinal fluid moving through the brain down the spine, uh, bathing and washing the nerve synapses in the spine, the spinal cord, and then this fluid going into the sacrum and then being moved all the way back up into the brain, and it has a cycle. And you can palpate the cycle, and you can count it out. So a, a normal cycle would be like 12 and 12. It would be maybe 12 seconds out, 12 seconds in. Um, a more a neutral and healthier cycle would be 24 and then 60. Nothing much over 60. So I was able to determine over the phone uh, a person's cranial rhythms, which gave me a lot of information. Because, for example, sometimes they weren't neutral and normal. They may be 12 out and then 16 in, and then it would be eight, and then it would be 14, then we'd be back to 12, so that it was, you're getting these different readings. Well, 
that all says something about the person's system. So that was one of the things that I was able to, to do. The other two things that I was able to do was I was able to bring potency into relationships, tissue and fluid relationships specifically, but I could bring it into any relationship. What was um, instrumental in me doing that was my intention. So the intention stated I could hold the stillness and then the potency would express itself and I would get an indication. The other thing that I could also do is I could get indications of on yes and no questions, which were extremely important because not being able to see a person, that's a lot of information that, that you're missing out on. And secondly, not being able to touch or have your hands on a person also is not being able to receive information that otherwise would be received from hands-on. So you had to ask questions and, you know, yes and no questions. Some of them were really simple. They were usually personal, you know, but I could still get information. And lastly, what I was able to do is I could, was able to, in some instances, uh, command certain things, certain responses within the body and the system. And I used my cranial sacral osteopathic training for the type of work that I began to practice energetically because the cranial work was an extremely energetic work to begin with. And I soon learned that doing it remotely, it was more profound because I could get very specific. I could access things in the body that I could not access with my fingers on. Plus, I didn't have to filter out all of the other information which I was receiving in my fingers. So that simplified the work. I was able to get my anatomy book out and anything with the name, I could palpate or I could bring potency in or I could hold the relationship with it. So th this was the, the basic preliminary background to, for my coming into this therapeutic energetic work um, nine months ago. Next show, we're going to discuss what is this energy that he's having this relationship with and <clears throat> how to establish that relationship. And what is the relationship between healer and energy and the receiver? These are all going to be uh, uh, great topics to discuss, and we'll look forward to seeing you there. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Sue.